Hey there, Goblin here, and today we're going to take a look at Fabledom, a city builder uh, that just came out. Uh, and now you might be asking yourself, why would I play this if there's Manor Lords about? Well, in this video, we'll take a look exactly why this one might be better choice for you. So first off, let's start with the aesthetics. The aesthetics in Manor Lords is very, very serious, very grounded, and Fabledom is much different. Uh, it's based on fables, so the story goes that uh, you were basically kicked out of your parents' home, all princes and princesses were, and now you have to make it for yourself in your own realm. Uh, and there's events that are fable based, for example, uh, giant beanstalk that I got in this game actually, and uh, you will see it, and uh, some trolls, witches, and so on. Uh, now, uh, you do get to name your realm, and my uh, realm name is, of course, not Mordor, because it's totally not, okay? This is a very peaceful community which will not attack anyone at any point, and uh, there's absolutely no forging of the rings or anything going on here. Now, when you do get enough uh, people, uh, your realm upgrades now we're a hamlet we still don't have to pay our parents but later on in the video you will see you will have to pay quite a lot to them now we're in winter and the winter time is actually the hardest time in this game because the coal is getting used for heating and the food doesn't grow uh, vegetables and crops of course don't grow but uh, later on if you do establish some uh, other things like farms pig farms and eggs if you do have some grain or vegetable you'll be fine uh it's very very easy game so that's the other difference between manor lords and fabledom is that this is very very not shallow but it's not as deep as something like manor lords is you can actually micromanage everything you want in manor lords and here you can't and you don't need to because the game is just um, so much easier to get uh, you know a nice little realm and just to progress the game it's much easier much faster too and much more cozier so that's one of the differences between the two games and uh, here I have the city grew quite much now I have 111 people living in my city right now. I'm very well for the gold. Uh, I'm starting to build some condominiums, which is places for not peasants. You have peasants, you have commoners, and you have uh, nobility. Right now, though, I have an event. Uh, this troll is here, but it's not actually a troll. It's a cyclops, and if you go over the choices it will show you what happens so you can not make uh, the wrong choice you can just see what you want and then just add it now this adds buff to desirability so i chose this uh, later on in the game you will have to pay to your parents so as your city grows you will have to pay more and more gold to your parents right now I don't have a lot so I don't have to pay much and my money is still pretty pretty good uh, I am trying to get the first date with Agnes as you can see she's very demanding so what will happen is you will court the ruler which you will discover after you build a messengers guild and then uh, they will you know raise your relationship status and you can court just one at the time. I'm courting Agnes and she wants the flower farm. She wants uh, 100 tulips and all of this is costing me 300 gold right now, which I will get back once I do it, but right now it does cost me a lot of money. You can see the giant beanstalk right here. Uh, the quest is still not done. The giant beanstalk is growing and after it grows, I can send a hero to collect the reward. And the reward for giant beanstalk is really, really good. It's uh, a golden goose, I believe, golden goose coop, which uses four grain to produce five gold. So that's my money problems solve for short term 
in that time. But you will have to get more fablings, collect more taxes, but in turn you will have to build more resources so they can live off the land. Right here is Agnes. I decided I will go with her. She's the Harvest Princess and she's probably the easiest to court. And then you can progress her relationship status with you until um, you can actually go as far as to marry the other ruler. Which is kind of the end goal here in the game as of now. Because, well, I don't think that war is in the game as of 1.0. I think that will be added on later. So, because there is no war right now, not Mordor has to resort to um, subterfuge to uh, conquer other lands. But once there's war in it, I'm definitely trying that out. I'm definitely trying to um, conquer other realms. Although, as I said, this game is very, very chill. So, um, even with war added, I don't think there will be any trouble to kind of, um, you know, just keep on going and not worry about being raided by uh, a bunch of bandits or anything like that. In early uh, access, I did see some skeletons walking around graveyards, but right now I didn't see them here. So there were some ancient graveyards that can be explored by your hero if it's within your realm. So if it's within your realm, then you can explore the thing that's there. Uh, that's why you need the hero. And uh, the beanstalk was in my realm, so he just came from the mission and I get a golden goose coop. So she lays valuable golden eggs and uh, my money problems for the time being are being solved. But your hero is an important unit just for that reason. Because as you will expand, the territories will get some landmarks like Witch's Hut or Ruins. And only the hero can explore those and you can get some more stuff. This is one point that I would like more of though. Because right now, um, I went to Ancient Graveyard and I got, like, a lighthouse to build. So that's just kind of lackluster. I would like more events when the hero goes to explore, for example. You can send him questing, not just for the other rulers, but also for yourself. And then he would be bringing you some mystical objects and ar artifacts or whatever. But right now, that's kind of very surface level. And that's one of the things that I think that Fabledom can improve on. Which I hope they do, because the game itself is pretty nice. So if you want to play something that's, you know, a city builder kind of with brain off most of the time, even though you see the decisions here, they're not so... <laughs> Uh, important like right now I received I got the milestone and I have to pay 100 coin to the family fund I got a bank I got some new um, building so I can offset there's a mystic mine which generates wealth but uh, there's a chance that trolls will come to attack so maybe don't build that one if you don't have an army uh, standing because the troll I think it's quite strong so you, you have to watch that your city doesn't get uh, completely wrecked. I don't think it does though. Like I said, this is a very chill game. You can build in peace, not worry about too much. Although right now I see my grain is pretty low, but it's just spring. Uh, spring started, so that means that uh, in winter the crops didn't grow. So that's why I have low grain. But looking at the other things, I have 12 eggs and almost uh, well it's 900 fish i am okay for food uh, you can hover over any resource you have and it will tell you how much uh, it will last right now it said that i have enough coal for 23 uh, days of winter which is too little so do check that but otherwise you know you, you can pretty much chill and the fablings are very well at doing their job, so you don't have to worry about much. 
And like I said, in Manor Lords, that's a little bit different. You do have to be careful about a lot of things in Manor Lords. And maybe you don't like that too much. Even in the peaceful building mode, you still have to, you know, uh, take care of a lot of stuff, micromanage, and, uh, you know, just... It's, it can be stressful. Manor Lords can be stressful, although it's a much, much deeper game than this is. But if you want like a city builder where you can just kind of sit back, relax, build at your own pace. Don't worry about being raided by bandits or everyone dying because you forgot to do something. Or, you know... The lightning struck and now there's fires. You don't have to worry about anything in Fabledom. So if you want something like that, something with cozy uh, aesthetics, with very nice little storyline, when you can court other rulers and stuff like that, then Fabledom will be for you. And then I would recommend it over Manor Lords, but if you want something deep, some very, very deep uh, city building scene, then Fabledom will not be for you. It's for people who just want to kind of relax and build and uh, look at their nice pretty city uh, and not worry about a thing. So that's Fabledom. If you like it, there's a link in the description to their Steam store. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe and comment down below what you think about Fabledom. Uh, next video will be another devlog on my game I've been working on. We'll look at some combos yeah i'll have combos in it <laughs> combos while uh, battling so in, sure tune in for that until next time be good to yourself and friend. others goblin I don't want to have out a finance, a new dragon. <laughs>